there. And then they, they realize, oh, well, I can get silver maybe at that point for $40 or $50 an ounce. Uh, you know, my money goes a lot farther in terms of ounces of metal um, for silver. And so that's when we tend to see silver move. Uh, it, it's a delayed move after gold, but often it uh, it's it's a more pronounced move percentage wise than than we see in gold. And so, just to kind of go back for quickly and answer your question, um, I think we will for the time being continue to see a steady rise in the silver price when you get some kind of a black swan um, that triggers uh, the the investment side of silver. That's when it it explodes higher. Yeah, what about silver equities performance? I mean, are they performing to your expectations or do you believe they are still lagging too much? They are still lagging too much. I feel that there's a lot of upside ahead. Um, they have performed okay and mostly only just in the last maybe three or four months. You've really seen them start to come back a lot, but many of them are still in a, a negative position in terms of uh, uh, overall uh, gains. If you look back on a two-year time frame or a three-year time frame, some some the the best best ones are are clearly ahead. They maybe can be up as much as uh, you know forty percent, sixty, seventy. Uh, a few hundred percent, but several are still below maybe 40%, 50% below yeah. levels they were at three, two or three years ago. And so um, the potential is absolutely there. It's, in my view, not necessarily a reflection of quality. Uh, I think that sentiment has a lot to do with it. And so they, they really have a long way to go. And um, uh, I don't know if your viewers know Real World Asset Wealth, how to protect your wealth from the upcoming financial impact. Download this brand new report for free and get instant access to our resources. Click the button below the video now. A, um, uh, someone who's quite, uh, who's been around a long time in the uh, in the uh, silver and gold and, and uh, resource sector in terms of research, uh, Doug Casey. And he likes he likes to say that, uh, you know, when um, <laughs> when when uh, when silver moves, uh, there are so few silver equities, especially the quality ones, that it's like trying to, you know, move the contents of the Hoover Dam uh, through a garden hose, which which is just it just there's no capacity for it. So the few good names that are there just receive all this all this buying, and it just pushes the the equities uh, dramatically higher. So yeah. that's to come. I believe that's still to come. Yeah, Doug is a smart guy, definitely. But he said the same thing uh, about uranium. Absolutely. Yeah, I completely uh, agree. Yeah. Uh, Pete, how can average person play the upcoming silver bull market? I mean, so, in the terms of uh, physical, in the terms of equities, mix. What, what's your take on that? Sure. I think the first thing is that each investor needs to know themselves. That's the, that's the most important. Don't just jump into this and say, oh, I need to have some silver. Know yourself, know your risk tolerance, know how much you have to allocate to uh, this sector, for example. And I say, no matter what, whether you are, are you know, a young investor with some money available and prepared to take more risk because you feel you have more time, or even an older person, you need, I feel you need to have at least some exposure to silver. And that can take different forms. And yeah. I would say that, um, you know, depending on your own situation, your age, et cetera, you can you can and should build your silver exposure to in a way that suits you best. All I can talk about is the different options that you have because I I cannot give anybody advice. Of course, uh, and the different options are physical silver, which I believe is the foundation in silver, and um, really I believe everyone should have at least some physical silver. It's been used as money for through history longer than gold has. And by some accounts, it has been used in more transactions value-wise than gold has, simply because it's it's a, it's a smaller value per unit, 
And therefore you can do smaller transactions, daily transactions, and more people can use it more, more accessibly. And so physical silver, I think is, is important. And then from there you go to um, silver ETFs, which is like a stock for anyone who's not familiar. Buying a silver ETF is like buying a fund of, of silver companies in by, by buying one single stock. And that's a, a great way to get instant diversification. <clears throat> The ETF does not depend on the, the prospects or the outcome of any individual stock. Uh, the ETF is, is, as I say, split amongst uh, many, many silver companies. So that's one way you have uh, larger cap silver ETFs. You have junior silver ETFs with, which smaller, with smaller capitalization companies. And then from there, you have individual companies and you have large cap royalty companies. You have large cap silver producers that have multiple mines and are, are diversified. So yeah. if anything were to happen, let's say within an individual mine, it may hurt the stock price, but it wouldn't be deadly for that stock either because they have sources of revenue from multiple mines. And then you have smaller producers from there. And then you have, uh, sorry, I skipped one. There are mid tier, so medium sized producers, smaller producers. Many times the smaller producers have an existing producing mine and a development project. Other things that they're exploring or they're looking to increase the existing mine or bring in an, an additional project online. From there, you have developers that are not, um, not producing yet, moving their project towards production. And then you have junior explorers. Some of those have a discovery. Some, some of them have a, dis, have a deposit as well. In other words, they've outlined a deposit. And some, the, the highest risk ones are some that are just have an idea. Uh, yeah. They're looking either near a previous mine. They're looking somewhere where they've seen outcrops, things that indicate there could be a silver discovery. And naturally, those are the highest risk because the drill uh, results will tell us if they really have something or not. So an investor, I think, can have a mix. They don't have to keep, you know, um, have all of these categories in their silver investment portfolio. Um, they should start with the least risky first, the physical silver, and then work their way um, towards the riskiest. And as I say, they don't have to have all of the categories. If, they, if this is a lower risk investor, they could, for example, have perhaps just some physical ETFs and maybe one or two larger cap companies. I will say that if the investor goes for the higher risk, they should definitely diversify. In other words, if you're going to hold some juniors, have at least probably four or five juniors, spread the money across several names. Um, you know, odds are a few of those will go nowhere. Um, and one, maybe two, will, will simply explode and will more than compensate for the other two that went nowhere. So... Um, yeah, I mean, I think that, and, and in the book, I really talk a lot about, I have an entire section.